Scientists recently announced the discovery of a new species of Mosasaur from ancient Africa, and it really highlighted the diversity of not just the Mosasaurs, but the overall diversity of the ancient oceans of the dinosaurs' age to the oceans of today. Welcome back to Paleopedia, and when I say that the oceans of the ancient past during the time of the dinosaurs were more diverse than the oceans of today, I don't mean that the oceans of today aren't diverse themselves, because they are. Rather, I'm referring to the number of giant predatory animals that inhabited the oceans back then compared to today, because it is vastly different. So the oceans back then were primarily dominated by the reptiles, and over the course of the Mesozoic, there were several different groups of reptiles that took their turn as the top predators in their ecosystem. Whereas today, the top predators are basically the whales and the pinnipeds, seals and sea lions. During the Mesozoic period, at the beginning, around the Triassic period, the oceans were filled with a diverse group of reptiles called the ichthyosaurs, which looked a lot like sharks or dolphins today. They all had the basic fish-like build, primarily using their tails to power themselves through the water, and they reached a pretty wide range of sizes, with a lot of them being 6 to 10 feet long, and a lot of them getting a lot bigger than that, with the largest being Shonisaurus, which could get up to maybe 60 or 70 feet. This group of reptiles dominated the Triassic Seas, but they ended up being replaced in the Jurassic period by the Plesiosaurus and the Pliosaurus, a group of reptiles that relied on their four flippers and uh, evolved a couple different methods of hunting. One evolved really long necks to hunt fish, and the others, the Pliosaurus, evolved really big heads with powerful jaws to hunt the Plesiosaurs. And then, starting in the Cretaceous period, a new group of reptiles took over the oceans. These would be the Mosasaurs, which was a group of aquatic lizards that looked a lot like crocodiles of some sort crossed with a Komodo dragon. And once the Mosasaurs appeared in the fossil record, they became the alpha predators, the top dog or top reptile in this regard, and just became incredibly diverse all the way through until the end of the Cretaceous when the asteroid struck and wiped out all the big reptiles. By comparison, the oceans of today are dominated primarily by these cetaceans. These would be whales, dolphins, and porpoises. And while not as diverse as they were 20, 30 million years ago, the whales are still pretty widespread, found in all the oceans, filling several different ecological roles, ranging from the five-foot vaquita in the Sea of Cortez, all the way to the giant blue whale, which is found in every ocean. And then alongside the cetaceans, there are the pinnipeds, the seals, and the sea lions. And these two groups of marine animals are pretty much the ones that dominate the oceans today. And that leads me back to the whole reason why I wanted to make this video, because of this new discovery of of this Mosasaur that was found in Morocco that lived towards the end of the Cretaceous period. Like I said, Mosasaurs were ridiculously diverse, and this new species highlights that. It had large, dagger-like teeth sitting in a relatively shorter, blunter jaw, indicating that it had an incredibly powerful and dangerous bite. And when comparing this specimen, which was given the name of Kinjaria acuta, to other mosasaurs that lived at the same time in the same place, you can see the diversity just through the teeth alone. Some mosasaur species had teeth that were more designed for crushing shellfish. They were thicker and flatter, designed to crush. Others had thinner blade-like teeth that were designed to pierce. Others had teeth that were designed to grab onto slippery prey-like fish. They were just incredibly diverse, despite the fact that they all basically were the same thing. So the Cretaceous oceans were ridiculously diverse in large apex predators of multiple different ecological roles, and we don't really see that today. Most marine mammals today, ranging from dolphins to seals, sea lions, and even the biggest of the baleen whales, feed on the same thing, smaller fish and krill. The only real apex predators of the oceans are animals like the great white shark, killer whales, and leopard seals. So if you compare the oceans of today to even just the Cretaceous oceans of Morocco, you can see that there's a much wider spread of apex predators back then than today. And honestly, it's likely just a difference in climate and the overall environment between the two time periods. Earth back then was a much warmer, 
humid tropical planet than it is today. There was a lot more warmth going on back then. Antarctica hadn't yet completely engulfed these southern latitudes. North and South America hadn't connected into Central America like today. This meant the ocean currents were much different. There wasn't nearly as much ice in the poles which would reflect sunlight and keep the planet cooler. It was just overall a much more tropical environment. And when you're talking about marine environments, colder water is more productive. Colder water holds more oxygen, which can support a higher level of biomass, which is likely why there were so many more apex predators back then than today. Today, most marine mammals, like I said, feed primarily on small fish, which are in huge numbers, especially in the northern and southern latitudes. This is why baleen whales have evolved to be so big because they can engulf so much of this food in one go without expending a whole lot of energy so they can afford to be so big. Back during the Mesozoic, that wasn't really a thing. There weren't these massive schools of herring and cod and all this other type of biomass for these animals to focus on. So they actually had to focus on each other as food. In my opinion, that's almost certainly the reason why the oceans of the Cretaceous period were so much more diverse in terms of the number of apex predators because there really wasn't another option. Mosasaurus really had no choice but to feed on larger prey from shellfish to large predatory fish like Zephactinus to even other Mosasaurus. They really just didn't have any other option. Whereas today, all the food is in the form of smaller fish and or krill. So there's a whole lot more of it and that allows the animals to focus on the same food without directly competing with each other. And maybe I'm entirely wrong. Maybe it was just the fact that the predators of the time were the Mosasaurus. So that just meant the environment was more likely to support larger and more diverse apex predators than the oceans of today. There's still a lot more studies that need to be done, but it's just something cool to think about. 